Milton by William Blake Section 5 There is a place where contrarieties are equally true. This place is called Beulah. It is a pleasant, lovely shadow where no dispute can come because of those who sleep. Into this place the sons and daughters of Ololon descended with solemn mourning into Beulah's moony shades and hills, weeping for Milton. Mute wonder held the daughters of Beulah, enraptured with affection, sweet and mild benevolence. Beulah is evermore created around eternity, appearing to the inhabitants of Eden around them on all sides. But Beulah to its inhabitants appears within each district as the beloved infant in his mother's bosom, round and circled with arms of love and pity and sweet compassion. But to the sons of Eden, the moony habitations of Beulah are from great eternity a mild and pleasant rest. And it is thus created, lo, the eternal great humanity, to whom be glory and dominion evermore, amen, walks among all his awful family, seen in every face, as the breath of the Almighty, such are the words of man to man, in the great wars of eternity, in a fury of poetic inspiration, to build a universe stupendous, mental forms creating. But the emanations trembled exceedingly, nor could they live, because the life of man was too exceeding unbounded. His joy became terrible to them. They trembled and wept, crying with one voice, Give us a habitation and a place in which we may be hidden under the shadow of wings. For if we, who are but for a time, and who pass away in winter, behold these wonders of eternity, we shall consume. But you, O our fathers and brothers, remain in eternity. But grant us a temporal habitation. Do you speak to us? We will obey your words as you obey Jesus the Eternal, who is blessed for ever and ever. Amen. So spake the lovely emanations, and there appeared a pleasant, mild shadow above, beneath, and on all sides round. Into this pleasant shadow, all the weak and weary, like women and children, were taken away as on wings of dove-like softness, and shadowy habitations prepared for them. But every man returned and went still going forward through the bosom of the Father, in eternity on eternity. Neither did any lack or fall into error without a shadow to repose in all the days of happy eternity. Into this pleasant shadow, Beulah, all all along descended. And when the daughters of Beulah heard the lamentation, all Beulah wept, for they saw the Lord coming in the clouds. And the shadows of Beulah terminate in rocky Albion. And all nations wept in affliction, family by family. Germany wept towards France and Italy. England wept and trembled towards America. India rose up from his golden bed as one awakened in the night. They saw the Lord coming in the clouds of Ololon with power and great glory. And all the living creatures of the four elements wailed with bitter wailing. These in the aggregate are named Satan and Rahab. They know not of regeneration, but only of generation. The fairies, nymphs, gnomes and genii of the four elements Unforgiving and unalterable, these cannot be regenerated, but must be created, for they know only of generation. These are the gods of the kingdoms of the earth, in contrarious and cruel opposition, element against element, opposed in war, not mental, as the wars of eternity, but a corporeal strife in Losis halls, continual laboring in the furnaces of Golgonuza. Orc howls on the Atlantic, Enetharmon trembles, all Beulah weeps. Thou hearest the nightingale begin the song of spring. The lark sitting upon his earthy bed, just as the morn appears, listens silent. Then springing from the waving cornfield, loud he leads the choir of the day. Trill, 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 trill. Mounting upon the wings of light into the great expanse, re-echoing against the lovely blue and shining heavenly shell. His little throat labours with inspiration. Every feather on throat and breast and wings vibrates with the effluence divine. All nature listens silent to him, and the awful sun stands still upon the mountain, looking on this little bird, 
with eyes of soft humility and wonder, love and awe. Then loud from their green covert, all the birds begin their song. The thrush, the linnet and the goldfinch, robin and the wren, awake the sun from his sweet reverie upon the mountain. The nightingale again essays his song, and through the day and through the night, warbles luxuriant, every bird of song attending his loud harmony with admiration and love. This is a vision of the lamentation of Beulah over Ololon. Thou perceivest the flowers put forth their precious odours, and none can tell how from so small a centre comes such sweets, forgetting that within that centre eternity expands its ever-during doors that Og and Anak fiercely guard. First, ere the morning breaks, joy opens in the flowery bosoms, joy even to tears, which the sun rising dries. First the wild thyme and meadow sweet, downy and soft, waving among the reeds. Light springing on the air, lead the sweet dance. They wake the honeysuckle sleeping on the oak. The flaunting beauty revels along upon the wind. The white thorn, lovely May, opens her many lovely eyes listening. The rose still sleeps, none dare to wake her. Soon she bursts her crimson curtained bed and comes forth in the majesty of beauty. Every flower, the pink, the jessamine, the wallflower, the carnation, the jonquil, the mild lily, opes her heavens. Every tree and flower and herb soon fill the air with an innumerable dance, yet all in order sweet and lovely. Men are sick with love. Such is a vision of the lamentation of Beulah over Ololon. And Milton oft sat upon the couch of death, and oft conversed in vision and dream beatific with the seven angels of the presence. I have turned my back upon these heavens builded on cruelty. My spectre still wandering through them follows my emanation. He hunts her footsteps through the snow and the wintry hail and rain. The idiot reasoner laughs at the man of imagination, and from laughter proceeds to murder by undervaluing calumny. Then Hillel, who is Lucifer, replied over the couch of death, and thus the seven angels instructed him, and thus they converse. We are not individuals but states, combinations of individuals. We were angels of the divine presence, and were druids in Annandale, compelled to combine into form by Satan, the spectre of Albion, who made himself a god and destroyed the human form divine. But the divine humanity and majesty gave us a human form, because we were combined in freedom and holy brotherhood. While those combined by Satan's tyranny, first in the blood of war and sacrifice, and next in chains of imprisonment, are shapeless rocks, retaining only Satan's mathematic holiness, length, breadth, and height. Calling the human imagination, which is the divine vision and fruition in which man liveth eternally, madness and blasphemy against its own qualities, which are servants of humanity not gods or lords. Distinguish therefore states from individuals in those states. States change, but individual identities never change nor cease. You cannot go to eternal death in that which can never die. Satan and Adam are states created into 27 churches, and thou, O Milton, art a state about to be created, called eternal annihilation, that none but the living shall dare to enter, and they shall enter triumphant over death and hell and the grave. States that are not, but are, seem to be. Judge then of thy own self. Thy eternal lineaments explore what is eternal and what is changeable and what annihilable. The imagination is not a state, it is the human existence itself. Affection or love becomes a state when divided from imagination. The memory is a state always, and the reason is a state, created to be annihilated and a new ratio created. Whatever can be created can be annihilated. Forms cannot. The oak is cut down by the axe. The lamb falls by the knife. But their forms eternal exist forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Thus they converse with the dead, watching round the couch of death. For God himself enters death's door always with those that enter and lays down in the grave with them, in visions of eternity, till they awake and see Jesus, and the linen clothes lying 
that the females had woven for them, and the gates of their father's house. And the divine voice was heard in the songs of Beulah, saying, When first I married you, I gave you all my whole soul. I thought that you would love my loves and joy my delights, seeking for pleasures and my pleasures, O daughter of Babylon. Then thou wast lovely, mild and gentle. Now thou art terrible in jealousy and unlovely in my sight, because thou hast cruelly cut off my loves in fury, till I have no love left for thee. Thy love depends on him thou lovest, and on his dear loves depend thy pleasures, which thou hast cut off by jealousy. Therefore I show my jealousy, and set before you death. Behold, Milton descended to redeem the female shade from death eternal. Such your lot, to be continually redeemed by death and misery of those you love and by annihilation. When the sixfold female perceives that Milton annihilates himself, but seeing all his loves by her cut off, he leaves her also, entirely abstracting himself from female loves, she shall relent in fear of death. She shall begin to give her maidens to her husband, delighting in his delight. And then, and then alone, begins the happy female joy, as it is done in Beulah. And thou, O virgin Babylon, mother of whoredoms, shalt bring Jerusalem in thine arms in the night watches, and no longer turning her a wandering harlot in the streets, shalt give her into the arms of God your Lord and husband. Such are the songs of Beulah and the lamentation of Ololon. And all the songs of Beulah sounded comfortable notes to comfort Ololon's lamentation, for they said, Are you the fiery circle that late drove in fury and fire the eight immortal starry ones down into Uro dark, rending the heavens of Beulah with your thunderings and lightnings? And can you thus lament, and can you pity and forgive? Is terror changed to pity, a wonder of eternity? And the four states of humanity in its repose were showed them. First of Beulah, a most pleasant sleep on soft couches, soft with mild music, tended by flowers of Beulah, sweet female forms, winged or floating in the air spontaneous. The second state is Allah, and the third state Al-Uro. But the fourth state is dreadful. It is named Or-Uro. The first state is in the head, the second is in the heart, the third in the loins, and seminal vessels, and the fourth in the stomach and intestines terrible, deadly, unutterable. And he whose gates are open in those regions of his body can from those gates view all these wondrous imaginations. But Ololon sought the Or-Uro and its fiery gates, and the couches of the martyrs, and many daughters of Beulah, and many daughters of Beulah accompany them down to Uro with soft, melodious tears. A long journey and dark through chaos in the track of Milton's course, to where the contraries of Beulah war beneath negation's banner. Then viewed from Milton's track, they see the Uro, a vast polypus of living fibres down into the sea of time and space, growing a self-devouring, monstrous human death twenty-sevenfold. Within it sit five females and the nameless shadowy mother, spinning it from their bowels with songs of amorous delight and melting cadences that lure the sleepers of Beulah down the river Storge, which is Arnon, into the Dead Sea. Around this polypus, Los Continual builds the mundane shell. Four universes round the universe of Los remain chaotic, four intersecting globes, and the egg-formed world of Los in midst stretching from Zenith to Nadir, in midst of chaos. One of these ruined universes is to the north, named Euthona, one to the south. This was the glorious world of Urizen, one to the east of Luva, one to the west of Thamas. But when Luva assumed the world of Urizen in the south, all fell towards the center, sinking downward in dire ruin. Here in these chaoses, the sons of Ololon took their abode, in chasms of the mundane shell, which open on all sides round, southward and by the east within the breach of Milton's descent. To watch the time, pitying and gentle to awaken Urizen. They stood in a dark land of death, of fiery corroding waters, where lie in evil death the four immortals, 
pale and cold, and the eternal man, even Albion, upon the rock of ages. Seeing Milton's shadow, some daughters of Beulah trembling returned, but Olalon remained before the gates of the dead. And Dolalon looked down into the heavens of Oro in fear. They said, How are the wars of man, which in great eternity appear around in the external spheres of visionary life, here rendered deadly within the life and interior vision? How are the beasts and birds and fishes and plants and minerals, here fixed into a frozen bulk, subject to death and decay? Those visions of human life and shadows of wisdom and knowledge are here frozen to unexpansive, deadly, destroying terrors. And war and hunting, the two fountains of the river of life, are become fountains of bitter death and of corroding hell, till brotherhood is changed into a curse and a flattery by differences between ideas, that ideas themselves, which are the divine members, may be slain in offerings for sin. O dreadful loom of death! O piteous female forms compelled to weave the woof of death! On Camberwell, Tirza's courts, Malas on Blackheath, Rahab and Noah dwell on Windsor's heights, where once the cherubs of Jerusalem spread to Lambeth's vale, Milka's pillars shine from Harrow to Hampstead, where Hogler on Highgate's heights magnificent weaves over trembling Thames to Shooter's Hill and thence to Blackheath, the dark woof. Loud, loud roll the weights and spindles over the whole earth, let down on all sides round to the four quarters of the world, eastward on Europe to Euphrates and Hindu to Nile, and back in clouds of death across the Atlantic to America north and south. End of section five.